Honda just announced they are restructuring their entire company in order to be more efficient and better equipped for the electric future. Today, we'll also mention their joint venture with GS Uasa to build next generation lithium ion batteries and also talk about Sony and Honda's electric vehicle known as a Fila. We'll get into the details on that today as well. And while this information just came out of Japan, I will be attending a conference call with Honda this afternoon about their more specific details for the North American market. So I'll be able to share that information here on the channel tomorrow. So definitely stay tuned for more local information, but this is more global. So let's dig into this restructuring of Honda. Honda announced today that the company will make organizational and operational changes effective April 1st, which is the first day of the new fiscal year. Uh, and it continues to work towards fulfillment of its vision to serve people worldwide with the joy of expanding their lives potential in the areas of mobility and people's daily lives. Okay, that's a great mission statement, I guess. With this year's changes, Honda will further solidify the direction of the organizational changes made last year with the eye toward the realization of carbon neutrality by 2050. Specifically, Honda will strive to further accelerate its electrification business and create new value by leveraging its broad and expanding range of mobility products and services. So we have three key points and I'll read those to you, but there's also this low quality image that they shared that I've modified to make it a little bit more readable. So I'll put that on the screen for you while I break down their new organizational changes. Step one, creation of electrification business development operations. Based on the business development operations established in April last year to strengthen electrification business, the electrification business development operations will be newly created. This operation will consolidate the business strategy and BEV product development functions of automobile business and electrification related strategy and development functions of motorcycle and power products businesses to further strengthen and accelerate Honda's electrification business. Step two, reorganization of regional operations. The current six regional operations will be consolidated into three regional operations, North America, China, and the third is associated regions. That third segment of regional operations known as associated regions combines Japan, Asia, Oceania, South America, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. And with this change, Honda will execute electrification strategies and strengthen operations for each region based on its global strategy. And the third step to reorganize their company is through reorganization of corporate functions. The corporate strategy operations and corporate administration operations will be newly created. The corporate strategy operations will further strengthen Honda's initiatives in formulating, executing, and communicating its corporate strategies toward a new value creation and the corporate administration operations will pursue the total optimization of corporate resources, which is aligned with corporate strategy. And lastly, by further accelerating the series of initiatives Honda has been taking to transform itself through electrification and new value creation, Honda strives to remain and become even more recognized as a company society wants to exist in the electrified era. Let's talk about Honda and GS Yuasa to launch their EV battery joint venture. Now, they've already been making hybrid cells together, but now this is taking that next step for battery electric vehicle batteries. My question here is will they be able to produce these batteries in North America? And if not, it really doesn't pertain to our North American market. They won't bring these batteries here. We don't import any vehicles from Japan that is a Honda or Acura anymore other than the new Type R, for example. And we know Honda and LG have a battery plant coming online in Ohio by 2025. It's possible they could have a separate battery plant with GSU also popping up in North America, but I highly doubt it. It's probably going to be for the Japanese market. And remember, it's not just a Japanese market, it's everything outside of China and North America that more than likely these batteries will serve with Japan being a big part of that focus and other parts of Asia. The new company will be established by the end of 2023 and will cover a range of EV battery related operations, including the planning of necessary sales channels. Both companies are still ironing out the details such as ownership stakes and a production plan. 
Lastly, Sony and Honda's EV called Afila goes where the Apple car never did, but we're not going to talk about Apple car because it's just kind of something that's never materialized. I don't know if it's ever going to materialize, but The Verge had a really strong write-up on Afila and their strategy, and it all comes down to software. Sony and Honda want to lease this car for you for 10 years because they know that reoccurring revenue is the future. Well, it's also the current like situation. Everyone has a subscription service. Honda and Sony want that subscription service to be a car and for a very, very long time. Sony and Honda will make this vehicle here in North America so they can take advantage of the EV tax credit. And with it being a sedan, it, can no, it can't be more expensive than $55,000 to qualify for the EV tax credit. So when this article hits home on the importance of software, and I can't agree more, but they're saying that hardware doesn't matter as much anymore. And there's some truth to that. Hardware doesn't matter as much anymore because electric vehicles are so efficient, they're so powerful, they're so smooth, that just about any EV powertrain feels the same as any other EV powertrain, even though you can have slightly different uh, technologies with electric motors and batteries, all feels pretty much exactly the same. Suspension can change, obviously interior, exterior will change. And that's when hardware still matters though. When we're talking about exterior design, do I wanna be seen in a car that looks the same for 10 years? Most people in America would say no. They want to get in and out of their car every two to three years or maybe five to six years. Once they are finished paying off their car, they go ahead and get another one. But if they want their customers to get in a car for 10 years, it better look out of this world. Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y are not cars I would want to drive for 10 years. They're already starting to look pretty dated in some ways, but you need to have a home run design. So hopefully a feel, a, I mean, I haven't seen this car in person. It actually looks pretty good and it's very neutral. So if you have a neutral design, it should in theory age better. And which subscription services would you be interested in paying in? Well, we know this car is going to have about 40 sensors and cameras. Thanks to Sony with all their sensors and camera technology, this car, with with that sort of hardware, wouldn't be hard to self-drive itself. That's why software is important, right? But what kind of services would you pay for? Would you pay, play for a, a play? Would you pay for a PlayStation service? Would you pay for a streaming service so you can stream shows and movies while you're charging the car? To me, I already have so many subscriptions that I wouldn't be interested in subscribing to anything else in the car other than maybe for the lease of just having the car and not having to worry about anything because it would be covered under warranty for 10 years. That would be pretty cool. Buy the Honda dealerships in theory. If Honda wants to and Sony want to sell the Afila through Honda dealerships or at least service them through Honda dealerships. I have a feeling, I have a, I can't say that without laughing. I have a feeling that the Afila uh, is going to be direct to consumer. Honda dealerships will miss out on the sales but Honda dealerships will have the benefit of servicing these cars, which is a good thing, which is pretty much rotating tires, maybe filling up the windshield wiper fluid for people who can't do that. I don't know, but I'm going to end it there. Are you a feeling Honda and Sony's relationship? I'm excited for it because technology is the future. I just hope they have a design that is worth holding on to for the customer for 10 years and Honda restructuring its business massively is going to be fun to see how that sort of helps them out with supply chain, developmental times, and also increasing their profits. And make sure to stay tuned because tomorrow I'll be giving you guys an updated picture of the North American market from Honda. If you enjoyed today's video, smash a like button and subscribe for more Honda Acura news coming down the hatch. I will be driving the all new Honda Accord and new Accord Hybrid as well in a just a week from now. So definitely stay tuned for that as well as I'm going to be debuting the Mazda CX-90 on this channel January 31st. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day and peace.